We now have two nearly identical 3D printers. This one is new. And this one is over eight months old with hundreds of prints under its belts. After more than 3,500 hours of printing, how good can this printer still be? In this video, we're gonna find out, so stick around. I purchased this printer more than eight months ago and it has printed more than 700 parts successfully. It seems like it's still giving me pretty good quality prints. And this printer was sent to me by the team at Banggood. I wanted an identical printer for testing for this channel and they were able to help me out. If you haven't already heard of them, they sell all kinds of 3D printers and upgrades. They also sell just about everything you can think of from RC cars to tools to electronics. The second printer is going to make a big difference in the quality of content I can provide and it should shorten the amount of time to make these videos as well. And before we do anything, I want to switch out the springs to an extra set of stiffer ones which will help prevent the bed knobs from loosening over time. I'm also going to switch out the dual gear back to a single gear extruder. If you haven't already watched my video on that, check the link above to find out why you might want to upgrade to the metal version. I've already recalibrated the e-steps on both printers and I'm running the same version of the firmware, so let's get printing. I'll be printing with PETG. It shows defects much better than PLA because of the higher sheen. This is also the cheapest PETG available to me, so it will be tough to get great results. I'm going to begin with these older rolls of red. Each roll used in the video has been oven dried on the lowest setting for more accurate results. They've also been kept in storage with desiccant as well. Now PETG readily absorbs moisture, which heavily impacts the print quality, especially due to its tendency to like to ooze during printing. I'm printing with a 0.5 millimeter nozzle, 0.2 layer height, two wall lines. I'll have a link in the description for the profiles that I'm using in this video as well. And these Benchy tests will be printed with the cooling fan only set to 8%. Already I'm seeing a problem with my first test samples on my Ender 3 version 2 printer. There are some tiny bubbles indicating that it isn't as dry as it should be. With both prints finished, you can see that there's a big difference in the amount of blobbing and stringing between the Banggood printer and my first printer. We can go ahead and repeat the same test on this new roll of blue PETG, but this time I've separated it for more accurate results. I'm also going to add an XYZ block for each printer in the same blue. Now, I wish I had the original Bowden tube for this printer. I had some issues with it moving in and out, so I've replaced it with the Capricorn tubing and it does have a smaller inside diameter and I have a feeling that it might be a cause of some of the stringing. So I've swapped them out and I'll run the same Benji tests again in blue. Before switching the nozzle for the final prints, I wanted to throw on some PLA and run the same test again. I've taken the same G-code and adjusted the nozzle temp to 200 Celsius and the bed to 60. The fans are still only set to 8%. Now PLA normally produces very clean prints, so I'm curious to see how well these are going to turn out. I've separated the PLA from the same spool again for more accurate results on this test as well. The first Benji samples, as I mentioned, are not really apples to apples. I don't want to compare the printers on these. The tiny bubbles are an indication of too much moisture in the filament. Although I like PETG for bed adhesion and minimal warpage, the downside is that it needs to be kept really dry, where you're going to see these surface bubbles, more stringing and more blobbing. These blue samples were taken from the same spool of filament, and we can still see more stringing and blobbing on my printer compared to the Banggood. Looking beyond that for a moment, the surface finish is good on both printers. If we look closely though, there is a very repetitive pattern on both prints, which is more visible though on my printer. Because it is so repetitive, this might be caused by warm belts, and at this point I've only replaced the Bowden tube, extruder, and the springs on this printer. There is also a visible transition line on all of the Benchy prints about 12 millimeters up. This might be directly in the G-code. Transitions in the shape of the prints themselves can cause these sometimes. The XYZ blocks look really good. The X-axis on both prints does not show those tiny vibrations, however the Y-axis does. Now the Y-axis has a mass of the aluminum plate, springs, knobs, wheels, bearings, bolts, and heating plate, as well as the glass itself and whatever it is that's being printed. The glass plate weighs 530 grams, which is more the entire X carriage. So that may have something to do with this. Uh, also belt tension may come into play here as well. For a fair comparison, these are the samples printed after switching the Capricorn XS tubing to the Banggood printer and the original tubing to my printer. 
As you can see, this has given a much closer result. So it is possible that the Capricorn tubing inside diameter is causing a little bit more friction and reduces the response to retractions and extrusions by a very small amount. Both of these Benchies printed in PLA turned out really well. And because of their lower sheen, they don't show those small defects nearly as well. It isn't as prone to blobbing or stringing as PETG as long as it's properly dried also. Now I wanted to throw on a few more tests with a larger nozzle and faster printing speeds. These are some vases printed in spiral mode with they are printed fast at 70 millimeters per second at a 0.32 millimeter layer height with a one millimeter nozzle. Now I've also printed these Prusa vases in red PETG with the same settings. For my first set of vases, I think they turned out pretty good. There are no layer alignment problems, but the overhangs could have used a little bit higher cooling. Now the red had the issue with moisture, just like the Benchies, and on the vase from the Banggood printer, it is still showing those tiny bubbles, so it might be time for a proper filament dryer to avoid these issues. I'm a little surprised that this printer has held up this well after more than 3,500 hours of printing. The wheels are showing signs of wear, the belts could do to be replaced, and the Z-axis nut is likely a little bit worn as well. We need to get these printers making nearly identical prints so that we can kick it up a notch from there. Banggood has sent me some upgrades to test out, so those will be the subject of future videos. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If you did, I'd certainly appreciate a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss out on the next batch of videos. Thanks for watching, take care, and we'll see you in the next one.